hello everybody. My name is John Lewis, uh, and I am the General Secretary of the Society of Antiquities of London, which means that I am the Chief Executive of the charity. <clears throat> On behalf of the Society, I want to welcome and thank you for joining us for our online conference, Lost Frontiers and Drowned Landscapes in Britain and Beyond. The Society of Antiquities is an educational charity that promotes the understanding of the human past and recognises distinction in this field through election to its fellowship. Founded in 1707, the Society meets its remit for the purpose of the advancement and furtherance of the study and knowledge of the antiquities and history of this and other countries through a wide-ranging programme of activities at Burlington House in London, uh, for the time being, and at Kelmscott Manor the inspirational retreat of William Morris in the Cotswolds. We meet our primary aim through focusing on conservation, research and dissemination. We encourage the care of the remains of the past. We find out about the past through those material remains and we share those findings with the public. This conference is part of that sharing of knowledge with the wider community. Since June 2020, <clears throat> we've moved our programme entirely online and have seen a huge increase in attendance, with hundreds of people joining us for all our lectures and events from all over the world. Today's conference has been organised by fellows Professor Jeff Bailey, FSA, and Professor Vince Gaffney, FSA. I'd like to thank them for the time and commitment to this conference, which was postponed from last autumn due to COVID. The conference is in collaboration with the ERC research project, Europe's Lost Frontiers, and will be part of present, <clears throat> this will be part of presenting the results of this project. We're delighted to be able to welcome over 500 people from around the world to this two-day conference, and we welcome all our speakers who are joining us from the UK, Australia, and beyond. And 500 people is, um, for other society, an enormous amount when you consider the physical capacity of our lecture theatre, it's about 110. Um, the exploration of the inundated prehistoric landscape of our coastal shells is one of the great challenges remaining to archaeology. In Britain and Northwest Europe over the last two decades, the results of dedicated research projects, commercial work carried out in preparation for marine infrastructure and community archaeology programmes have transformed our understanding. And on a personal level, I've spent uh, a fair chunk of my professional career as an archaeologist excavating and writing up uh, the uh, Lake Glacial Long Blade uh, Lithic Assemblages uh, from Britain. Uh, and it's quite clear that these represent, and in Europe, represent uh, groups of hunter-gatherers following migrating reindeer herds out of the North Sea Basin, which has subsequently been drowned. So uh, from a professional point of view, I'm really looking forward to this conference. Doggerland is now the best studied uh, of these areas uh, and UK researchers and collaborators around the North Sea have given us a global lead in such studies. However, it is massively resource intensive and as yet <clears throat> has attracted very little RC UK research funding. All the major funding has been European and the project has also been dependent on the goodwill of European partners for access to research vessels. Big developments will be happening in the North Sea and we as archaeologists must be ready to respond. Future research and researchers must be supported if this lead is not to be lost. I'll now pass on to Jeff, who is going to say a few words about how this event came about and the purpose of it. And he'll also provide some information on how people uh, can ask questions. Uh, so Jeff, uh, over to you. Good morning. <coughs> Uh, I've got three uh, opening remarks as the uh, chairman of this morning session. Uh, first of all, to the speakers, you have a time limit, uh, which I shall monitor. Uh, I shall turn my screen and microphone off while you're speaking. Uh, when you're close to the end of your talk, I will turn my uh, video on again. If you don't take that hint and you hit the deadline, I'll turn my microphone on just to uh, uh, establish that protocol. Secondly, to the audience, uh, there is an opportunity and will be an opportunity to ask questions uh, in the normal fashion. But if you want to do so, please remember that you have to type your question into the chat box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, I will then read out the questions 
uh, depending on the time available. Uh, we're bound to lose some time, but we'll see how we go. If worse comes to worse, the speakers might reply to you in the chat box. The third comment that I want to make is about how this meeting came about. Uh, it originated as two quite separate ideas. Uh, over two years ago, I proposed to the Society of Antiquaries, the, their research committee, of which I'm a member, that we have a, a one-day meeting on this theme. Uh, I was aware that in the UK, in Britain in particular, Scotland, England, Wales, there are many people working on this theme, too many actually to fit even within a one day meeting, which is the standard society format for a collective event. Uh, uh, nevertheless, um, that proposal was accepted. And at about the same time, uh, Vince Gaffney, who's on the council of the society, uh, was in discussion about hosting the final workshop of the Lost Frontiers project. So we very quickly combined forces to make this a two-day event. Of course, this was all in pre-COVID times, designed for people who live or work within easy traveling distance of central London. And that constraint has been removed, as we all know now, thanks to international uh, video conferencing technology. Nevertheless, the original format remains. This is essentially a British, uh, predominantly a British affair. But there is a beyond in the title, uh, which needs uh, explanation. That recognizes the fact that there are many other people working on this theme, especially amongst our European neighbors. Uh, the Southern North Sea is shared by five countries in Western Europe. And we have some of those people talking as part of the uh, landscape project today. Uh, the other element is that in tomorrow's meeting, three of the speakers, uh, myself, Jonathan Benjamin, Helen Farr, uh, are actively engaged in field work in Australia, as well as in the UK. Uh, and that may seem a rather exotic outlier to combine with Britain, but we should remember that uh, Australia is par excellence, the maritime continent. It is a continent where human entry always required fairly lengthy sea journeys uh, from mainland Southeast Asia. And we know that was happening at least 50,000 years ago, perhaps even earlier. And that maritime strain is deeply embedded in the history of the Australian continent. Uh, it is still there. It is ingrained in the uh, indigenous Australian Aboriginal worldview uh, with its emphasis on sea country. And the history of that continent has a lot to teach us, I think, about what might have been going on along coastlines in other parts of the world and in other continents and has the potential to alter our perspective on world history. More of that uh, tomorrow. Uh, today's talks are entirely focused on the uh, Europe's Lost Frontiers project, uh, which is led by Vince Gaffney, who's going to give uh, the opening talk. Vince has shouldered the burden of leadership by giving himself the shortest uh, amount of time to talk. So I won't uh, dwell too much, but I should introduce Vince. He's quite well known to many of us, uh, both nationally and internationally, famously so for an earlier project that he led on the North Sea Paleo Landscapes prize-winning project which demonstrated in a remarkable way just how much information about features of the drowned landscape can be extracted with sufficient computational power um, from the seismic records of the offshore oil and gas industries. <laughs> the new project builds on that, and indeed that earlier project paved the way for the new project funded by the European Research Council, uh, which is using different and new technologies and techniques dedicated to answering archaeological questions rather than discovering oil and gas deposits.
beneath the seabed. So without further ado, I will invite uh, Vince to give his talk on the Europe's Lost Frontiers project, the challenges of exploring the landscapes beneath the Southern North Sea. Vince, over to you. <laughs> 